this is chapter 27 of Solid to Rebuild This Function, Part 6. Uh, hydrocephalus. This is an imbalance in the production or absorption of cerebral spinal fluid in the ventricular system. So it can be caused by making too much CSF, and that's usually going to be a tumor or something. It can be caused by a block in the normal flow of the CSF. That's called non-communicating. It doesn't go from one place where it should to the next and communicate or, or move on. Um, this can be a, like a neonate who had um, an intracranial hemorrhage. It blocks that normal flow for the CSF. Or it can communicate. So you make the right amount. It moves the way it should but it doesn't get reabsorbed the way it should. Any of those will cause a buildup of too much cerebral spinal fluid. Our kids with spina bifida, the meningeomyelocele, they, the majority of them, have hydrocephalus. And here's pictures of a couple of babies who unfortunately have not had their hydrocephalus um, managed. If you notice, they both have those sunset eyes and really large heads. So just kind of um, to review, your CSF is made down in the ventricles of the brain. That's this part here. And then it comes out, bathes the brain and the spinal cord. It should be made at the same rate as it's reabsorbed. And we said you can make too much. You can block it so it just builds up in here but doesn't really get out where it needs to. Or you can have a problem where you don't reabsorb. Here's a picture, it's just kind of a cross section across the head here looking at really enlarged mm -hmm. ventricles. So what are we gonna see for symptoms of hydrocephalus? Well, the big one is a large head. We're measuring um, a baby's head to see how it grows. We're looking for that head growing too fast compared to the body. They'll have a large bulging fontanelle the bones of the skull become very thin and have um, separated sutures. Uh, the, the veins in, in the scalp um, become dilated. You get bossing of the, the forehead, so really large, enlarged forehead. The sunset eyes, where you see the sclera above the iris, they're kind of deviated downward. Irritability, lower extremity spasticity. Um, we said this goes with spina bifida, right? And if we let this progress, because this does cause increased intracranial pressure, um, brainstem dysfunction. So how do we manage it? Well, depends on what's causing it. If we have some sort of obstruction like a tumor, let's do surgery and get it out. Most kids, uh, the treatment is a ventricular peritoneal shunt. So this is a shunt that goes from the the ventricles of the brain and takes that extra CSF fluid and just dumps it out into the peritoneal cavity, which is a big sterile area with lots of absorptive surface. So it can absorb all the extra CSF that we dump into it. So there's a one-way valve on this um, that opens at a preset uh, pressure to let the extra CSF move out, but not too much. So it's got a, that set pressure. Um, so hydrocephalus um, is common with bacterial infections, uh, spina bifida, or um, preterm babies who have had interventricular hemorrhage. All those things are common causes. So the, a child who goes to get a VP shunt, we're going to position them after surgery on the unoperated side so that that side's up. Uh, they don't want the ventricular size, those ventricles of the brain, to reduce too rapidly because sudden changes were risking tearing and pulling those vessels um, and can cause bleeding in there. So the old ones used to have a little pump on it and the physician literally wrote orders, pump, you know, five pumps every two hours or something like that. Because remember, there's a one-way valve, so when you push it, it sends it one way, but it won't send it the other way. 
um, the new shunts are much more high tech. So they're all electronically adjusted. Uh, so we, I haven't seen the pumping in years, but um, if somehow you got an old shunt, that could happen. And if that shunt gets infected, they'll switch to that externalized ventricular drain. It shouldn't say VT, it's just ventricular drain. And we'll give them antibiotics, clear up the infection, and then put it back in. Because we don't want the shunt in there getting colonized with germs. We need to get it out, get the infection cleared up, and then put in a new one that does not have any germs in it. So here's the VP shunt. It goes right down into the center of the brain, into the ventricles. Then it comes up to the surface and just under the skin, you can feel this. We'll say track palpable. You can feel it under the skin, kind of going down behind the ear. You usually lose it here where you can't really feel it anymore. And then below the diaphragm, there'll be another little incision where it pokes down from being just below the skin to down deeper into the peritoneum. And these are our valves along the way that let this extra CSF come out and then just dump out down here. Um, they give some extra, just thread it around, loop it around down there. So as the child grows, it can stretch out with them. So ideally this is done once and works great for life. Um, I don't know that that happens too often. Often they'll, as the child grows, instead of just stretching out, it'll kink or it'll get infected or get plugged up and have to be revised or replaced. But that is a ventriculoperitoneal shunt.